tôi sinh ra từ đây ơi à ơi à từng câu dân ca dù tôi vào giấc ngủ say qua cầu gió bay nước xanh ngồi là nước trong say ố tình còn cả lạnh ở cái duyên có ai du Welcome to the 16 Sea Chat Chat Time. Um, good afternoon for everyone in Southeast Asia. Good morning, you are in, uh, in Europe. But Sea uh, Chat is basically is the digital um, platform 
of civil society organizations in Asian countries. But it's not just limited to our friends in ASEAN, but also we, we do the outreach all over the world. Uh, CELTA is founded in 2019 to strengthen the third pillar of ASEAN, the cultural pillar, besides, of course, the economic and security. The founding members of CELTA are Indonesian Heritage Trust, Mulberries of Lao People's Democratic Republic, Penang Heritage Trust, um, Jangon Heritage Trust in Myanmar, the Heritage Conservation Society of the Philippines, Singapore Heritage Society, the Siam Society under Royal Patronage in Thailand, and Center for Research and Promotion of Cultural Heritage in Vietnam. And other Asian civil societies organizations are welcome to join with the founding members. And Chacha is especially eager to include participating groups from Brunei and Cambodia. Since formations, uh, Siacha has been initiating various programs. For example, like our Cha Time uh, monthly program, a digital monthly talk with a new cultural heritage team every year. And it is intended for sharing knowledge and expertise of common cultural heritage issues in Southeast Asian countries. And talks are held virtually on Saturday afternoons like this. And the program lasts about an hour for each time. The second initiative that we are doing is the cultural management clinic to empower cultural conservation locally, like in Siak and Sumatra, Indonesia in 2020. And we are planning the next one in, in Pangasinan, Philippines, uh, in, uh, probably in next year. And also we are organizing conferences. The upcoming conference is under the theme, Cultural Wisdom for Climate Actions. The Southeast Asian contributions embedding cultural wisdom for climate actions to the vision of regenerations, which will be organized physically in Bangkok from 12 to 14 January 2023. Now, without further ado, let me ask Mr. Nguyen Duk Tang, the Seacha Board of Advisor member, to introduce today chat time with Mr. Fu Ji Hu for our chat time number 16, our Vietnam Cha. So enjoy. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Professor uh, Widodo. Um, thank you very much for a very encouraging uh, speech. Uh, uh, good, morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so my name is uh, Tang from Vietnam, from the uh, Center for Research and uh, Promotion of Cultural Heritage. We are based in Hanoi, and we have a lot of um, projects and activities across the country. So today, uh, I'm very honored to be the facilitator, facilitator for our discussion with the presentation by Mr. Võ Chí Hiếu. Uh, Mr. Hiếu was born in the Mekong Delta, Vietnam, and he himself witnessed um, you know, the change or the, or the impact from climate change um, that the farmers face every day. And one of the big problems is in unclean water in his um, livelihood. Uh, so um, Mr. Hiếu was part of the Liang project, um, uh, which offers him the opportunity to take action in recovering the upstream water resources in the Lan Bian Plateau in the central highlands of Vietnam and supporting the millions of people, especially the farmers. Uh, Mr. Hill is currently pursuing his um, education associate degree at the University of the People. Uh, and besides, Mr. Hill uh, was also founder of Tate Hoop Company Limited. Uh, which is specialized in developing ag tech uh, education technology products, in addition to his customer service skills and experience. So um, the topic today is uh, about um, the project, and Mr. Hill will will be uh, delivering uh, his experience and the, the views on the vision of the project um, in the topic of uh, the roles of ethnic uh, heritage preservation in protecting water resources in the Lanbian Plateau. Uh, the Lanbian Plateau is uh, in uh, Lam Dong province, which is in the central highlands of Vietnam. So um, uh, today, so we have uh, about an hour to, um, so for Mr. Hill to share his uh, knowledge about information about the project. And we also have saved some, some, some time to for our discussion. We have uh, the, in the, in the, Q&A box. So uh, 
during his presentation, if you have any questions and we have a concern about the projects, please uh, jot in the Q&A box so that I can uh, pick up and try to bring it to him after he's delivered the presentation. Uh, now over to you, Mr. Hill. You can call him John Wall. Yeah, Mr. John. Thank you. Thank please. you so much, Mr. Zhang. Uh, first of all, I would love to say thank you to all currently I count 23 attendees. Good morning and good afternoon to every single one of you who have spent your precious time here with us today. And again, thank you, Mr. Tang, for your wonderful int introduction. I never had that kind of remarkable introduction so far in my life. <laughs> and it's, so, it's, it's so lovely to have that one just recently. Right, so now I'm going to share my screen in order to deliver my sharing. I, I would like to call it a, a sharing instead a presentation. It's, it's quite stressed, more stressed if we use the word presentation. Here we come to our sharing today, the roles of ethnic heritage preservation in protecting water resources in the Lambayan Plateau. Before we go to the content, I would love to ask you one question, but please do, do not answer me, just answer yourself and keep it inside you and share with me later. What is the purpose, the main point that you want, you wish to take away at the end of my sharing? This is the code that I started to have and created with my team in Lian project. I believe, we believe, and I'm, I'm sure that every single one of us believe in a world where every single person has access to clean and safe water. Because clean water changes absolutely everything, including health, access to food, local economy growth, as well as education. I would love to take you all on a journey for more details about access to food. As Mr. Tang have shared, introduced me that I was born in the Mekong Delta. Specifically, I was born in a farmer families unit and my family are farmers for generations. Therefore, I know exactly every single pain that farmers face nowadays. And here is some numbers for our reference in the Mekong Delta, this is the largest area producing rice as well as stream production in the whole country of Vietnam, my lovely one. Back in 2019, the Kai Lung River, as you see on the left screen image, it is completely dark due to a lot of reasons, including disposal of waste, health waste, and so many other reasons. And here is a severe drought in Bantia province because the Mekong River is run through the Mekong Delta and it is the ending point of the river. So there are still a lot of areas facing severe drought nowadays until this very moment. And we know a fact that the Mekong Delta is damaging, is affecting us a lot. Some more information about this. I guess that we all know this one. The world's 12 longest river starts from the Tai Chi Plateau, and it is an in Mekong Delta, Vietnam. Why I share this? The point is that because, especially in Vietnam, the, the Mekong River also went through Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, but we cannot control it. We cannot control it for the reason is that we at the ending point and everything that we have to face, we, we don't know what happened on its flows going through the starting point until the ending one. Come to this point, we have come up with an idea that we need to do something if we want to protect and preserve water resources, that we need to protect the water resources star in our country. And in Vietnam, there is one 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 plateau that we need to pay attention to, the Lang Bang Plateau. This Lang Bang Plateau provide river, sorry, provide water to two largest rivers, Domna River and Sepok Rivers. This Sepok River not only going through Vietnam, but it's run 
also to a part of Cambodia and it joins the re, re, the Mekong the Mekong branches. So these rivers affected nearly like 50 million people lives whose lives rely on these rivers, including the southeast region, Mekong Delta, and a part of Cambodia. We have come to like a lot of other river started in the countries in Asian, like the Chi River in Thailand, the Kanabataran River in Malaysia, and Kapuas River in Indonesia. So what are our solutions here? For example, let's take Langbang Plateau for us to see. In the Langbang Plateau and all other plateaus like the starting point of a river in our countries, we have forests, we have mountains, and of course, people. So from these things together, we can protect the water resources. And when it comes to people, it is always about human beings because we live there, we, we do things to the nature. We don't know is it positive or negative. But the thing is that we keep doing our thing. And especially when it comes to economic, eco economic issues, that is it getting harder every single day. So we just forget to protect the nature. To on the Langman Plaza or all the you know starting point, starting point of any rivers that people mostly are ethnic groups. And when it comes to ethnic groups, we need to discuss heritage preservation because this is like a thousands of years they have been building heritage and they have been living there peacefully with the nature. But what are the reasons that make it getting worse? every single day. Some of you may ask, how can heritage preservation protect water resources? Let me go in detail with these contents outline. First, I would love to share and prove how ethnic heritage preservation protects water resources. Next, at the end project, what do we do to preserve the ethnic heritage and protect water resources? Last but not least, we have come to the idea to apply just a draft idea that I see because we have so many things in common, especially in all Asian countries. So could we apply similar models to other countries? Let's start with some major causes are destroying water resources, management of resources, loss of forests, pollution and population growth. We're going to discuss in detail these major reasons. Let's start with a lot of forest. In the Langban Plaza, there are a lot of ethnic groups people. And nowadays, when we face the COVID-19 period and it's getting better like in Vietnam and other countries in Southeast Asia, but the thing is, it is getting much worse because of the war between Russia and Ukraine. So, people are facing a lot of issues to make their lives, to, to live their life and to make and miss. And so lots of other crop people, they decided to cut down trees due to deforestation in order to exchange for more money. And of course, they don't think that they can live with or live in the forest nowadays. So our point is here to have ethnic crops make money from living in or with the forest peaceful lakes and of course with their lands that is their lands for thousands of years and what we need to do is to have them realize the values that they can still do that for more thousands of years next pollution this is a very lovely image taken in the, in the highlands highland central of vietnam they are all really innocent kiss faces, and we would love to keep it that way. It's also due to financial issues. When families and the group families, they sell their lands or other organizations come to the center of Highland to do business, there are so many greenhouse gases, fertilizers, insecticides, disposal of waste from factories. They are you know, are going through to river because when they do doing business in the Lemon Plateau, 
the this kind of thing, fertilizers, insecticides, it go down and the river and down the, down and the river, and then it's affecting it impacting the river sources. Our job is also to support anti crops make money from living in and with the forest peacefully. And when we can do that, they can keep their lands. They don't need to sell their lands or uh, other companies. They, 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 they may find other way to do their business, not in the center of Highland or perhaps do it in a more sustainable way. The next reason is that population growth destroy natural flow. This is like American. We all know a fact that people originally born in the central highland are just a very minority. However, people from the north, people from the south, they make their move to go to the central highland and build a new life. And this one puts a very, you know, like severe and huge pressure on people's shoulder, especially the ethnic people. This means that again, the and project need to do something in order to support, create more vacancy jobs to support ethical people in order to live in their lands and peacefully with the forest. So here we all, always come to the financial issues. How can we preserve ethnic heritage if it's hard to make and miss? There is a similar concept like the climate change in developed countries like the US, the UK, or Europe countries. They are paying so much attention to climate change, then there are countless organizations doing that. And when it comes to India, when it comes to Nigeria or Vietnam, so just like emerging or developed countries, how could we do that if we cannot take in ourselves properly? If we cannot live properly, we care so much for the food, for the water, and we don't have it yet. I love this one so much. When we, the team, the Lian project team members, went to the Highland Centers for our business and talking to ethical people, a girl carried out by her mother with this so beautiful face and look at her eyes, just, it, it's, it's just so hard for us to not do anything to support them. And this is Red, Mr. Red, he, his family, luckily enough, this is a, a very for, fortunate that his family have a small area of coffee farm. Just in the harvest time that he go to the, uh, to the farm and have a coffee in the morning, and then he take another job being a tour guide at Beat Up National Park. That Beat Up National Park is partnering with our project, Liam Project, in order to deliver multicultural hiking to not only Vietnamese, but foreign people. We have come to a few keepers right here. Ethnic groups make money from living in or with the forest and their lands. And of course, we need to be a sustainable life with nature. When we do, research and come to all these important key points, we created the Liam Project 3 segment model. Would love to share with you all in detail what we do specifically in order to support people preserve their ethnic heritage and to protect water resources in the land bank plateau as well. This is our model three segment. And from these three segments, we preserve ethnic crop heritage. And from this preserve ethnic crop heritage, we protect water resources as I already showed you. And of course, from the model itself, we directly protect water resources because we are an organization not for profit. All the revenue we have, of course, this is the models that we do like self-funding in order to gain revenue on revenue in order to support people, ethnic crop people to preserve the heritage. And we also use all of them to protect the water resources in the land bank plateau. And segment one, this is a tour. It's a tour. There are kind of several tours that we already organized. We have been offering tourists hiking tours to explore ethnic cultures, multicultural. We have been surveying 16 villages and locations for which there need to be three need to be preserved 
and one needs to be renewed. Our main objective in the future will be done last, last year, sorry, just in the end of last year, about to build a living museum which creates historical settings to simulate a pastime period, providing tourists experiential interpretation of histories. The reason is that in Vietnam, we have a total of 54 ethnic groups, and most of them are in the Central Highlands. So it means that we need to leverage to utilize everything that we have in the Central Highlands to create the most extraordinary, remarkable, and rem memorable tours ever to our foreign fans, not only Vietnam, again. And this one is a way, a very, the best way, the best way that we can do until this moment that we have covered the idea, we do to, to, to gain more revenue for the end project and to support ethical people make their lives better. Some images, like the, on the left one, the left one that we see the people gather in the daytime, we go through all the lands, the mountains, the rivers, to see how beautiful it is in the highland center of Vietnam. And on the right, there is a very cozy dinner with ethnic peoples. We sit there together, share how we've been through and um, experience everything, everything that ethnic people that they do every single day. Our main purpose here is to support ethnic groups, acknowledge their heritage value and the importance of living in the forest. And of course, all revenue is reinvested for doing research, building a living museum and support other people. Here we come to the educational plan care business. This one, we offer ethnic people more job vacancies to make revenue and make revenue from research. We have done a couple of things. For example, preserving many Vietnamese plant genes and prepare for exporting as well as producing pharmaceutical products from mushrooms. The image that you see that is a product from mushrooms that we do. And of course, the main purpose is to expose Vietnamese famous plants regenerated by Liam Project Aspas. Some plants that we already did on the left, and we can see a like a very memorable or the meaningful meeting conversation between the head of the segment with the Liam project founder. And of course, with a couple of professionals. In this educational plan camp business, we have ethic groups acknowledge the importance of forests and plan businesses to protect the environment and earn more money. For sure, all the revenue is reinvested for doing research, supporting ethnic people's livelihood and protecting water resources as well. Here we come to the last one, segment three, healthcare services. The point, we are going to build forest canopy revenues for healthy citizens, not for the patient. This is not for patients. And we have already introduced a health app beta version and look and um, see us on like the app store and preparing for a connecting platform between doctors and patients. This one, the health app is only the foundation for our forest canopy wellness aiming to protect healthy citizens in Asia. And of course, this, this, this wellness, this canopy is built under the trees. This means that we need to preserve the forest, the forest, and the forest is one of the reason, the main reasons affecting water resources in the land bank plateau. This is the app that you can see, Dr. Li M. Uh, we already launched a beta version and about to launch the official one. On the right, we can see a cultural houses in the center of Iceland, Vietnam. That we use for combined with like um, the canopy around us. So in this one, we support ethnic groups know how to grow their economies by protecting the forest through our forest canopy wellness. 
and to protect water resources similar to segment one, segment two, that all revenue is invested for doing research, taking care of people's health and preserving heritage. I strongly believe people and nature can strive together that I use the term symbiosis. This one symbiosis that people and nature can not live separately. We need to live together, protecting one another and strive together for a better future. We'd love to introduce you all to our team of experts, including Dr. Daniel Hada. He's a doctor of philosophy degree in botany, Ms. Hu Pham, PhD expert in cultural heritage, and Mr. Ramui, he's the founder of Liam Project. He's he has a PhD in business administration. Huck Hiller, look Hiller, he is an expert in motoro hiking and cannot miss Mr. Jung. He's a PhD in aquatic biosciences. This is some of our successes that we so far protected and regenerated endangered plants care in Vietnam, Vietnamese genes. We have gathered a fully enthusiastic forces and international team to aim for one mission together. We also have organized some trekking tours to support not only ethical people, but also to bring more value to the whole community. And for the healthcare application that we already launched the beta visits. And of course, in order to have these kind of successes, we need to do every single day on the team so far, we work on building and aiming for one purpose only, protect the water resources from preserving heritage. However, there are also some kind of challenges. The first one I, I, I would love to share at first, that's the fairness cap canopy. It means that we need partners and we are still looking for more like for suitable partners in order to speak up the process and the funding is also a problem as well because we are the self-funding organization so if and in the beginning it's not much if we want to move fast if we want to speed up the process and do more research we need funding to do so and currently we have around 12 scientific research in order to know inside deep down about the water resources in order to come up with a really really good suitable and effective solutions our call is to partnership a for partnership all over the club and partnership are needed right now to run the models and of course to apply to regional areas as i shared earlier that there's ideas to apply similar models to other countries in Asia. The fund investors, yes, of course. So here we come to the part three, how can we apply models to other Asian countries? Let me take back a second to our Mekong Delta. There's nothing we need to prove more regarding the severe problems we are facing in the Mekong rivers. An article from National Geographic back a couple of years ago that Mekong River is the lowest end in 100 years, threatening the food supply. And we all know how damaging it is, especially in Thailand, Laos, Cambodia. We all have the same issues. That's why the Mekong River Commission is created back for a decade ago. And we, 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 we know that. I, I just have a tough idea why don't we have kind of another organizations in Southeast Asia in order to apply similar models, models of the end project to all, to, to all the countries. Pro protect water resources that original start in the countries in our action, is our main things that we need to do. We need to take action right now. If we don't, we all know what the consequences are waiting for us in the future. We are not only to live here once, but we need to protect it. We need to be accountable for the next generations. There are more rivers originally start in Southeast Asians, including the Canadian River from the Philippines, 
on the Gachan River, you know, come from the Iron Mountains, the Borneo Island border between Indonesia and Malaysia. But what we do here in common that we call a starting point. In all, so when 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 a river starts, there are five regions or five five starting points could be from rainfall, snow melts, bubble off, and the ground lakes or the lab house. Because in the land bank plateaus or the land project models that we come from a huge lake and rainfall together we combine it with the forest and people living there that we all know as a group most people are ethic and from here we protect the water resources as i've already shared so it means that we could do something slightly different slightly different in other asian countries because you know it is impossible to apply the same thing right it is impossible to apply the same thing we need to do more research we need to understand deeply more about people in that area in order to to make people and nature strive together as a symbiosis so here we aim for a green sustainable life in the jungle and we cannot do it without the help of ethnic people in order to gain their help we need to support their first by preserving their heritage. By doing so, we need to provide them a more vacancy chance in order to live peacefully with the nature. Thank you very much. That is the end of my sharing. And uh, would love to he hear more about every, every participant's thoughts about the idea. And yes, I'm uh, willing to share more. Thank you so much again for spending your precious time. Uh, let's uh, come back to you, meet, meet the Tang. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hill, for, for your um, presentation. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I think Mr. Hill have, uh, has also provided us um, a number of uh, information on um, his projects. Um, which the, the project derived from the, the fact that uh, not just the impacts of the climate change that um, created, created severe damages to the environment, uh, especially on the water resources, but also the other factors uh, for the past few decades, uh, the loss of forest, deforestation is one of the big problems. Pollution is also another um, big issue. And Population growth and urbanization is a big factor in, in adding to the uh, negative impacts uh, from climate change. So it look it, it seemed to uh, to me that um, um, the, the project uh, has found identified the, the cause of damages um, onto the environment of the local uh, communities are just not the climate change itself but from multi causes. And um, the project has employed a holistic approach, which, which, which created um, a dip, different models of um, measures to try to counteract with the, um, counteract with the, the um, reality of uh, the um, environment being damaged. And um, there were, there were three group of segments of solutions, and most of them are um, working forward uh, into the direction of uh, sustainable tourism and income generation. Um, so, um, and I think um, it's a it's an interesting uh, project with a really uh, good vision. So, now we have uh, one question from um, Dr. Jim Sten. Um, I wanted to bring uh, this uh, question. I have I have some more, but uh, I I will first uh, will 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 deliver this uh, question to you so that you can respond to uh, Dr. Jim. Uh, so thank you for your understanding presentation on an exciting project. And how many ethnic people in total do you believe have been impacted by your project? And is there potential to expand your model to other areas in Vietnam? 
so it can can be the sum come up with the first point of the question okay yeah so the first part of his question is how many ethnic people in total do you believe that your project is or has impacted it on so okay thank you first of all thank you so much for the question so in in vietnam right right now the total population we have like nearly 19 million people and the king the king growth has most most of the population so it means that there are just people in the side highland central vietnam there are just a couple of thousands thousands to a million ethnic people living there so it means that because we build everything the water in the forest and in the forest inside the forest like near the beat up national park that most of them most of them are ethnic group people and when, when we tell the fact that we support them to 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 earn more money so they can live there because more and more people move to another lands like as they cannot live in the forest it means that our project aim to support these if we wonder, it, yes we know it's, it's a small number in the center high plan but by doing so people will live there and live peacefully, peacefully with the forest they their thousands of years living peacefully and protect the rivers the forest so regarding the point that how could we apply to other river areas in vietnam or even in regional areas this one we need to do more research for sure <laughs> we, we haven't got any idea yet for all the reason in vietnam that's why if we see is, is it possible to to make successful to not first for successful objective first in the land bank plateau we will move to another land so right now we only focus on the land bank plateau Thank you, John. Um, so we have another uh, comment and also question uh, from Intias uh, Moonbill. Um, yeah, so uh, the question is, has Mr. Va, has you, have you studied the sufficiency economy principles of um, His Majesty King Rama IX of the Great Thailand? Because many of his ideas have been, been implemented in Thailand for decades. Some of the projects have succeeded but other fails, other fails, yeah. But it is a leading example of water system, sustainability of the ASEAN. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. So, uh, honestly speaking, so now, right now, yes, we, I, I myself haven't, haven't studied that yet. I haven't studied that yet. So perhaps, perhaps in, in, in our team, that people more specifically, they expert like, uh, P some PhD or some kind of mem core member, they study that one, but I myself haven't do it yet. So thank you for sharing that one. We will take a look into it and to see how it could, could be supportive and helpful to our models in Vietnam. Thanks, John. Uh, thank, thanks to MTS for a um, good compliment on the uh, teacher um, organizing this uh, talk and thank you. Thank you for, for your appreciation. And uh, um, we have another question about um, uh, from Jing Jing Hu. So um, the question is that would you mind giving us one of, one or two specific examples of how exactly the revenue you made from the multicultural hiking are used on water protection actions? So I mean, how 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 did you use the revenue from tourism from hiking it, to yeah, to invest back in, in the preservation and protection of the water resources. Okay, I need to say <coughs> in a two part. The first one, the first one is that uh, all the revenue from the multiple hikings. We, I share you really briefly about 12 scientific research that the team is currently have the idea on develop, developing the first one. Okay, right now we are developing on the first research. So for the research, we are going to understand more about the water resources in the Lambang Plateau. And we have Mr. Yung Lai, he's a specialist in Bonansic Biosciences, and he support us closely in order to gain more knowledge, understand everything about this. This means that all, all the revenue we use for research and to understand 
more about what resources in the language. Yeah, but, but um, I, I think uh, maybe I didn't I'd make the question clear that um, so you would you help the people with the income generation activities by creating tracking tours yes. and yes. other activities. So how did you use the income or the revenue from those activities for protecting the water for on, onto any actions on water protection? It's your, as a part of the, the, the goals of the project. Yeah. So, okay. No, okay, so what I understand here is the, the question is uh, how, so Lion, we have a revenue, okay? We have a revenue from the multi mm -hmm. hiking tours. How, how mm -hmm. do we use this for water protection? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and could you give one or more, more two uh, examples? Okay, so yes, uh, right, right now it's, uh, I already shared that we have 12 scientific research mm -hmm. and we are doing the first one right now. So all the revenue is reinvested for doing research because we, we are self-funding at this moment. We are self-funding and we use the revenue for doing research. It's mean that we need to gather more data that no, no one else has. And some, yes, yes, there are available data, but we need more. We need more in order to avoid like future challenges or failures. Because uh, the previous question that in Thailand have similar models and, and some, some of them has found. And we don't, I, I, yes, I don't know the reasons. So to this one, we need in order to have successes that we need to research this really, really carefully. Yeah, so I, I, I also have a really similar question to um, Amon and also Mr. Ming uh, from, from, from Vietnam and Amon, I believe in Thailand, that um, how did you, how did the project obtain the consent of the, the local communities in participation in, in the project? How, how, how did you convince the people uh, to deal with okay. the people to believe and to, to accompany you to work in the project from the, at the beginning? Okay. How did that happen? Yeah. Okay, may I ask uh, the question again, that's convince people, it's mean ethnic group, right? Is it also all the authorities or can 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 you confirm? Oh, I I mean because in, in order to uh, make people understand and aware of the importance of the protection of their natural resources, including the water, and how did the project team convince, or how did you get their consent in participation in the project at the beginning? Okay, so um, for if the question the question for the teams is is one because we all have a kind of experiences experiences really close to the matter that is in the team itself and regarding ethical people it is because they do not care much about the project they just care how to make a living they just care how to earn more money and support their families but that's it that's it so for as a group of people, if we offer their more opportunities to stay exactly where they have been staying for a thousand years and uh, to earn more, more money from living in the forest, from using their experiences, because just for the tour, they are the best one. They have been living, going through for a hundred of times for, you know, in all the areas in the Lang Bang Plateau. And they just now be, be a tour guide and work, work with them. Build up national park and with the project to gain a more revenue. Um, I've seen that the um, one of the important section segment of the activity of the project is to create it um, to bring tourism. At, in my understanding, that uh, to try to create uh, sustainable tourism in into the local communities to be involved and to have them involved in the activities. To help them generate the incomes, but the the thing is that people come and people people enjoy the the uh, the, um, the environments they enjoy the activities, but also there are ha, has the project has to, um, uh, foresee any impacts from tourism or 
how how would you if if you did how would you uh, prepare be prepared to take control of these impacts? Uh, yeah, it's it's, it's a common issue. It's really a common issue, not only Vietnam but other countries. And Thailand is doing so well. Uh, I mean, like uh, there are of course positive and negative impacts from tourists when we develop or you know deliver these kind of tours. And um, yeah, yeah, we, uh, the, the whole team is uh, come up with ideas in order to prevent like how not only provide vacations and jobs for ethnic people and gain more money but not to impact negatively the um the water resources could be some rubbish on the roads or some kind of things so yes we we, we also have make it make it it's absolutely clear to people in the beginning when they start their tour i'm not sure if i'm answering the question uh, we have another question. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. We have another question um, about how how badly the, the two decades of the Vietnam War, Vietnam War actually did a lot of severe damage on the natural environment in the Mekong Delta, and what are still the lingering effects that uh, Vietnam faces today? Do you know, and especially especially for water resources. The impact uh, from the war. So, the impact on the water. The yeah, from, 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 from the from the yeah from the Vietnam War. Yeah. <laughs> from, from the Mekong Delta, this is this is a really hard question to me. Yeah. This is a really hard question to me. Okay, I answer this question based on a perspective of farmer. I was born there. I was born there. I live until like uh, 18, 18, Okay, before moving to Ho Chi Minh City. I see, I see every every year, okay, every year that people has worse quality waters because around my home, my house, my house, around my house, there are all farms, are all farms, rice farms. And in, in my province, Bạc Liu City, Bạc Liu province, that we can do one time per month to grow rice. And a lot of farms, areas that they cannot do it because they are the quality of the water right uh, because we have the sea water invades that I, I i use the word invade what water quality water are invited by the sea waters and this is all come closely to the idea of climate change on to other things so those are the things that i see nowadays besides in my province, my families, especially my family, do two jobs, including the stream production as well. And it is getting harder to have a productive season. To have productive season, again, it is also due to the quality of water resources. And most of the time, farmers like my father, my family, they are lose, losing money rather than earning more money from the stream production. But there is no way that they can do otherwise. Yes, uh, I, I think salination and, and I think uh, intrusion of uh, saline water into the, the river is in, in, into the best part in, in cities, the Mekong Delta is now still a, a big problem. Uh, in, in response to the question by Intas about uh, the damage from the war on the natural environments, and I, in my understanding that um, uh, the, the land and the water was damaged uh, during the war, like especially in the 1970s, late that late uh, 60s, 70s, when when there were big um, um, campaigns um, by the U.S. Um, armies, uh, the, either the bombing or the spray of uh, Agent Orange dioxin. But uh, I, I believe that the the um, the impacts, uh, the lingering effects, impacts of uh, Agent Orange on the environment is less severe than on human beings, and then it's not a topic. But uh, uh, the environment recover quickly, more quickly as it is a bit to to human beings. But uh, yeah, definitely now the, the today's problems, I think part of it uh, is um, from the impacts from from 
climate change is a silent agent of, uh, so people have to, as Mr. Duval was, uh, was pointing out that um, people have to, to be resilient to adapt to the new water environment for in, in their farming. The other change, uh, the, the number of the crops, the rice crop, and an another, the second crop is gonna be using another variety of um, agricultural food or um, fish or whatever um, water products to, 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 to produce. So um, um, you now we have, so did I and Mr. John answer or respond to your questions? Um, I, I do think that uh, this is a really interesting project with um, great in initiative, especially it um, it helps the local communities who are the the owner of the the territory that they have been living on the like hundreds of years. And uh, but I, can can you give give some us uh, an, an example of um, how how the project has helped to keep the, the cultural traditions of the local communities in the Central Islands, especially in the Lanvian Plateau, be alive or be to be continued to practice in connection to, to protecting the, the environment and, and water resources. The, the, the topic is about, maybe you unmute yourself. It's, uh, can you unmute? Sorry. Okay. So thank you for the question. Uh, right. How how we can help them to keep and protect all the heritage, cultural heritage. That when our teams came to the Central Highlands, you know there was a like Gong Jing that lots of almost everyone here know about Gong Jing in Central Highlands Vietnam. And when we come to ask them to play to play that one. Most of them, they really don't don't keep that kind of practices because there is no reason for them to do so. It, it, it's just like when we are living a very modern and te technological world. So there are lots of things that people can have to do and to enjoy. And regarding the cultural heritage, if people can find reasons they don't like doing it, and for the multicultural hiking tours that we organize a group of tours gather like at night, people gather and play together to enjoy the, 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 the cultural heritage. This is a part of the tour. So it's mean that they keep progressing and improve the thousands of year cultural heritage and they earn more money by showing a part of the Lian project. Uh, the other point that how this uh, like can protect the water resources. Again, it is come back to their natural habits that the ethics, they know that they need to live peacefully with the nature. They protect it very well. They protect it very well. And in my sharing, I have pointed out some of the reasons, including most, mostly everything come to financial issues. And when it comes to financial issues, especially people with very low income, families, individuals in the Central Highlands, they need to find a place for a living, a better one. This means that they abandon everything. They like uh, uh, abandon heritage, cultural heritage. And if we can do so, it means they keep their, stay there, practicing cultural heritage. And together with the LM project, we can protect on the water resources in Lemon Plaza. Thank you. Yeah, do we have any other uh, questions? Because um, I, I, I found it fascinating that uh, the project used the, the Lanbian Plateau. It's a natural environment of the many ethnic groups um, in the Central Highlands, which is their, you know, their territory for, for as you said, um, thousands of years, but I believe in hundreds of years. Uh, there are cultural traditions that uh, they practice. For the, example, the, the, the Gong culture. You uh, you show that the uh, the communal house uh, of one of these ethnic uh, there. But uh, I think it's more important that um, to keep the the um, 
the natural environment. Um, people live in the, the forest. They eat the forest. They use the forest. But they don't destroy the forest. They, they, they worship the forest. So I, I think their knowledge, uh, their, their, their indigenous native knowledge are very important. But um, I think that would also, would, I, I hope that that, that would both <clears throat> uh, to uh, the um, creation, uh, the creation of this, another, the third uh, segment of your project is to create, uh, to, to research on the, the plants for medicinal plants for many years, because they know what is good for their health for hundreds of years to cure ailments. So they know, they, they know exactly what to, to preserve. So I am glad that, um, so I want to like clarify that I think the, one of the benefits from project is that uh, to, um, to, to take advantage of their knowledge, of their knowledge of the jungle, of their knowledge of the water resource. And also um, it seems to me that the project would pay a, a good respect to the cultural traditions of the ethnic uh, group. Um, we have one more question. Uh, from, I think two more, good question from um, Amon. Sorry if I, I pronounce your, your name wrongly. So um, regarding to the Doi Moi policy, so any or any development policy, the country tried to boost local economy through industrialization or urbanization. So how do your projects come over or integrate the policy into your project. Okay, thank you for the question. First of all, yes, our LEM project founders and co member teams also work very closely with all the authorities in the Central Highlands, especially in the Lam Dong, Lam Dong province. You know, most most part of like land plaza are in there, so we know exactly what are the policies. And the people in there, they, they also gain more awareness day after day about how important and critical in protecting the water resources, especially in the central, the, the, the central highlands. Most, they are forest and they know, they know the fact that they need to do something to protect us. And as you said, that urbanization, of course, industrializations, that they need to find other ways, not in like cut out tree, you know, do the deforestation in order to have more lands. No, we 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 don't it, don't do that that way. So yes, the project needs to do and need to follow the policy really close. That is why the team work with the other authorities in the province, in the Lambda province. Thank you, John. Uh, maybe one, one last question from Jingjing. Jing. Perhaps she uh, has some other thing to, to go, but uh, I think it's a good question to ask. Uh, uh, so how long has the project been going on? We, we, we might miss that. And when and how it end? Okay, this is just uh, <laughs> like uh, the easiest one for me to answer. I'm sorry, you know, for the previous question. Some that I didn't answer well, you know, yes. Uh, I'm sorry if I didn't answer your questions earlier. And for this one, it has been started for two years, but you know, we, we, we all know that the last two years we are damaged severely by COVID-19. And for over like one year and two quarters, we stopped we kind of changing and modifying, revising our project models in order to fit with the context. So now everything is get more stable. Just hopefully, we don't need to face deal with the COVID nineteen anymore. Uh, we now live with it, right? So just hope for the best. Including that time in the COVID nineteen period that we have been running for two years, but actually. We, we, we just recently pushed our authors since like in April this year, when every, team, every single members can come up working together. And the ideal ending is us. We have the sustainable models working, supporting together with ethnic groups, people in the Laman Plateau. And we know everything, every single pieces of data about water resources. And there is no way we can come up with solutions if we don't understand it deeply. 
and the next Thank step you. to apply to other region, regions. Sorry, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's great. That, uh, th thanks, John. Uh, I would like to invite um, Dr. Vidodo, if you have anything to share with us on this um, topic. Well, thank you so much. It has been a very uh, productive uh, afternoon. Uh, enjoy so much about presentations. And of course, there's a lot of problems. It's not just about environment and not just about the, the history, but also even the challenge like uh, the source of the Mekong River itself from, from China, the building of the dam and also how this cross-border problem is being resolved. So, so many things uh, to be done, but I think what John has done so far, at least it will give some hope that we, we well, let the next generation solve this problem. Um, John is still very young. You have plenty of time and you have a lot of ideas. So I, I'm, I hope that through this talk, uh, many young people and also people in ASEAN regions and also all of the world getting inspired, you know. So thank you so much, John, for very inspiring talk and the conversations. And also Tang for moderating and concluding this chat time this time. And also to all participants who already asked good questions and joining these sessions. So stay tuned for the next chat time program. And once again, we would like to invite you, everyone here, to join our conference, Cultural Wisdom for Climate Action in Bangkok, Thailand, from 12 to 14 January next month. No, wait, it's not next month, still in January. So, um, so thank you once again, everybody. Uh, have an enjoyable weekend and stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, John. Good job.